I'm William Cooper, and you're listening to the Hour of the Time. Hello, baby. It took me a long time to face my situation. But I, I went back there and I was on the phone. That we went through You should understand me Like I understand you So sweetheart, I know the difference Between right and wrong I ain't gonna do nothing To upset our happy home Ladies and gentlemen, please make yourself comfortable in your favorite chair if you have one. Make sure that you have everything there with you so that you don't have to get up and walk out of the room during this program. For tonight, I'm going to do something that I've wanted to do 
for a long, long time. And until this radio program became a reality, could probably never have done. And ever since May the 4th, 1992, I've been thinking about this moment, trying to formulate in my mind exactly what it was that I would say to all of you. Because tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to be giving you information from sources or from CADGI or from my research. I'm going to speak to you from my heart to yours. And I hope that we can have a real, real communication. I'm going to be speaking to you from a point of deep, deep concern and a total love for all of you and for this country, this great, great nation, for the Constitution and the Bill of Rights that our forefathers so thoughtfully placed into our hands and into our keeping for their posterity. And folks, there's not going to be any commercials during this hour. This is on my nickel because this is important. And after this program is over, after it's over, if you still walk away from your radio set confused about who I am or what I'm about or what I'm attempting to do or who you are and what you're about and what you should be doing, then I will have failed in my efforts during this hour. I want to apologize for Swiss America Trading because they're not going to get any calls tomorrow and they backed us 100%. And I want to thank Craig Smith and Gene Miller and all the wonderful people at Swiss America Trading for all the help and the backing and support that they've given us and all the money that they have put out to pay for this airtime. When I tell you folks that they are truly our friends, it's no joke. It's not just something that I frivolously say into the microphone, for they truly are our friends. It has bothered me for a long, long time that I am attempting to reach out to you and give you a message, and so many people seem to be confused about what that message is. So many people come back to me asking questions that tell me that they don't really understand what it is that I stand for or what I'm saying or what they're supposed to do. I had a phone call this morning from a good friend of mine who lives in Texas who wanted me to make an appeal on the air for everyone to come together and fight for the same cause and forget their petty differences and all of these types of things, and he didn't understand why I cannot and will not do that. And this is just one example. Another person calls and asks me, why don't you belong to any of these groups? And he names off five or six or seven groups. And I tell him, and he just doesn't quite understand. I'm going to try during this hour, folks, to let you know who I am, what I'm about, why I don't belong to organizations, and exactly what the message is that I'm trying to impart to you. For I am, and I've said this before, I am a messenger. Make no mistake about that. Now, to give you some example of the type of confusion that's out there, I am called an anti-Semite by Jewish people, and of course, I am not. The blacks don't understand it when I say that they are just as racist as most whites, Jews, and Orientals, whom they call racist. 
when they band together and hold up their fist and yell black power and plan and wait for the day when they can form their own black nation. So they don't know what I'm about. They're confused about who I am. I received a letter the other day from one of the leaders of the Aryan movement who claims that I have attacked the Aryan race. And he is wrong. For in my message that we are all one people and that the enemy is dividing us to conquer us, they all misinterpret my message. You see, if I don't come out for the white Aryan racist point of view, then I must be anti-Aryan. And that is not true. If I do not support the blacks' goals of bringing together a black nation, then I am anti-black, and that is not true. If I print the protocols of the wise men of Zion in my book, then I must be anti-Semitic, and that is not true. Most people, when they read my book, they read it selectively, and it must be read word for word from beginning to end with nothing omitted, for the book flows and everything leads into everything else. For those of you who may be Jewish, I specifically stated in my book that I believe that the protocols of the wise men of Zion are, if not in its entirety, at least partially, is made up of the plan that's being used to enslave us all. I state in my book that it was not written by Jews, and the document itself confirms that for people who can use their intellect and knows anything about Jews. I used it as an example in my book as how the plan to manipulate us all into the one world totalitarian state could be suppressed by those whom the plan intends to enslave or eliminate simply by making the document appear to have been written by those people. In my book, I talk about the manipulation of blacks. I talk about the fallacy of a master race, which is what generally the Aryans believe. And on this radio show, I've attempted to impart to you that those of you of the Christian faith who believe in the identity movement are wrong. You see, either Christ's ministry obliterated and superseded all that came before, or it did not. You cannot selectively say that Christ superseded some things and did not supersede others. Either the New Testament replaced the Old, or it did not. If you are a Christian, of course, if you are a Jew, then it makes no difference whatsoever, for you have always stuck with the Old Testament. And I heard the other night, I believe it was Pastor Bob, stating <clears throat> that he had seen on television three Jewish rabbis, very famous Jewish rabbis, he stated, who claimed that they had never read the first five books of the Bible. And he was probably correct in what he said, but he certainly misinterpreted because, you see, the Jews do not read the Bible. The first five books of the Christian Bible is, in fact, the Torah. The Jews read the Torah in the original Hebrew, and they have no need nor desire according to the tenets of their religion, to ever read the Bible or the first five books of the Bible. Every young man of the Jewish faith, while he is a young man, must study the Torah, which is the first five books of the Christian Bible. While he studies the Torah, he is being prepared for what's called the Bar Mitzvah, or his coming into manhood. 
at his bar mitzvah, he recites from the Torah. So while Pastor Bob certainly was correct in that the Jews do not read the first five books of the Bible, and the first five books of the Bible are their Torah, he misinterpreted it to mean that they never read those books at all. In fact, ladies and gentlemen, they read a better book. They read the uncorrupted Torah that has not been perverted in translation over thousands of years. And they read it in the original Hebrew. Now that's not to say that I'm putting any kind of stigmatism on the first five books of the Christian Bible, beginning with the book of Genesis. But you have to understand that in the process of translation into English by different authorities over the years, the meanings of some words have been changed. The meaning of the message that Pastor Bob was delivering, and I believe that he was doing this sincerely from his heart, according to his understanding, was that the Jews are not the true Israelites, that they don't even read the first five books of the Bible, that they go by something else. His message was flawed because it was not true, and it was not true because he does not understand anything about the Jewish people. Now, don't get me wrong, folks, I'm not Zionist. I am not for or against Israel. I believe Israel should stand on its own two feet. And if it survives, it survives. If it does not, it does not. Period. Israel does not support me or these broadcasts. I happen to know that at the heart and soul of what is changing the world and bringing about the new world order is a strong element of Zionism which has nothing to do with Judaism or the Jewish people, but is an Aryan thing. You see, the Aryan racists believe that they are a master race, that they are the true Israel, And you can see this all over in Christian communities, and it permeates the state of Utah. The Mormon Church is probably the most Zionist entity that exists upon the face of this earth. For those of you who have not studied history, it was not the Jews who brought about the formation and the reality of the state of Israel. It was powerful interests in the United States and in England who caused this to happen. But this is not preached from your pulpits of your local churches. This is not told to you if you are a follower of the Prophet Muhammad. All of us, as a whole people, are being manipulated. We're being manipulated by our religious beliefs, by the heads of our churches, we're being manipulated by the secret societies and bringing about the New Age. We are manipulated by the media, which is owned and controlled by these people. And just Monday night, I brought you an entire hour identifying by name who these people are. And yet, you still allow yourselves to be divided so that they can put the chains around your ankles and lead you into slavery. And you must understand these basic things before you can understand where I'm coming from, ladies and gentlemen, and before you can understand where you're going if you don't change this attitude. For everyone asks me, what should I do? Everyone asks me, who can I believe? Everyone says, well, if you don't belong to these organizations, they may must be no good. Or if you don't belong to this organization, you must be against it. That's not true, ladies and gentlemen. The strength of the American people has always been in their 
fierce independence. Their ability to use their common sense and up until about 1913, their ability to discern the truth from a lie. Most people who live upon this earth today wouldn't know the truth if it smacked them right in the nose. My message, ladies and gentlemen, is that unless the human race as a whole, all of us, each individually, learn that we do not need to look to someone else to find the truth, then we will always be slaves. My message is that we must mature, or we will always be children, and children always need a mother and a father, Isis and Osiris. My message is that each one of us must learn to discern the truth, to research, to investigate. That it's okay to give some of your power to a leader as long as you never believe anything the leader says and check everything that they tell you. And never do anything upon the orders or suggestion of a leader that you know to be wrong. There will come a day, ladies and gentlemen, when we do not need leaders or governments. But that day is far off in the future. That day is not today. I can look out across this country and around the world and I can see that. Most people are sheeple not people at all. Sheeple always need a shepherd. Always. And the shepherd will, because of necessity, fleece the sheep and occasionally lead them to slaughter. And until the sheep learn to become the shepherd of their own selves, this will always be true for mankind in general throughout the world. It will never be true for me, for I have transcended the need to revert to childhood. I do not need socialism. I don't need a mother and father. I don't need a babysitter. I have learned to think for myself. I don't even need a paycheck. My needs are very simple. I have a great thirst, an unquenchable thirst for truth, for knowledge. I have an unquenchable desire to meet my Lord and Savior face to face. I have a great need to help other people and try try to wake them, to wake the sheeple, to empower the people, and save freedom for the entire world, not just for this country, but for all people of all colors, of all religions, of all nationalities, beautiful or ugly or somewhere in between, I don't care. I have this great feeling of compassion and understanding for those of you who are asleep and who cannot wake up. And I realize and understand that some of you never will, for it is not meant to be, for you cannot. You are afraid. Standing up alone without looking to someone for leadership or someone to tell you what to do or where to go or give you your pittance so that you can live. 
is a very scary proposition for most people. But at the same time, it is the only means of salvation upon this earth for the human race. Until God decides to unfold and bring into realization the rest of his plan. Man was put here to make a choice, to make a decision. And those of you who say that everything is fated and everything must be and there's nothing you can do to change it, if that is true, why do you go on? Why do you go to work in the morning? Why do you go to church on Sunday? If you do, why do you go to the mosque? Why do you go to the synagogue? Why do you bother? If everything is fated, it's going to come to pass no matter what you do. Why do you try to convert someone from an evil life to a good life? If everything is fated, that's their fate. Leave them alone. You see, on the one hand, you say you believe this, and on the other hand, you demonstrate to me that you don't believe it at all. That it's an excuse why you don't have to be responsible. We're at the fork in the road. If you take the right fork, if you take the right fork, you make the conscious choice. You have chosen to side with God in good, and you have chosen to take whatever consequences that decision entails, and that you must live your life in the faith, in the faith, and that you must do as Jesus Christ taught us to do, love thy neighbor as thyself, but you must still fight against the enemies of good. You must take a stand. And if you take the left fork, you have chosen to live in the material world, to be ruled, to be led by Lucifer, Satan. You have chosen to live your life by your works, in the sure knowledge and belief that the promise that Satan made in the Garden of Eden is true and that you will become God. That you will become God. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it matters not to me which choice you make except that I wish you the best. And the best is the right choice, the right fork in the road. I have made my choice, and I am standing on God's battlefield, fighting this battle here. And if you take the left fork, I will feel sorry for you, but I will strike you down when it is required. For you have chosen the side of my enemy, of the enemy of God. And if you come against me on this battlefield, I must, of necessity, to fulfill my destiny, strike you down. It's that simple. It is that simple, ladies and gentlemen. There's nothing complicated about any of this. We're in a great struggle between the forces of good and the forces of evil upon this earth. It is the spiritual world, those who live by the law of God and by faith, those of the water of life against those of the priesthood of the God of fire, Lucifer, of the material world to live for things, for works. These two worlds can never be reconciled. Never. And if you've chosen the wrong path and you've been following it in your life, it is never too late to repent of all that you have done wrong, to go 
back to the fork in the road and take the right path. For God loves all equally. Equally. There is no master race. Whomsoever believeth in me shall have everlasting life, and there are no conditions attached to that statement. None. None of race, none of color, none of nationality, none of geography. It's time for our break, folks. Don't go away. I'll be right back after this very short pause. This ain't coming from the prophet Just an ordinary name When I close my eyes I see The way this world shall be When we all came in here For a crust of bread When the last man dies For his words that he says When their shells are over The poor pay We shall be free The last thing we notice Is the color of skin And the first thing we look for Is the beauty within When the skies and the ocean Drop me Ladies and gentlemen, Delamar Duveris once said, One basic truth can be used as a foundation for a mountain of lies, and if we dig down deep enough in the mountain of lies and bring out that truth to set it on top of the mountain of lies, the entire mountain of lies will crumble under the weight of that one truth.
And there is nothing more devastating to a structure of lies than the revelation of the truth upon which the structure of lies was built because the shock waves of the revelation of the truth reverberate and continue to reverberate throughout the earth for generations to follow, awakening even those people who had no desire to be awakened to the truth. Now, folks, there have been many, many related sequential coincidences all throughout my life. Incidents that by themselves would have led nowhere. Statistically, the odds against the same or a related sequence of events happening to one individual are astronomically high against. It is this series of incidents that have convinced me that God has had a hand in my life. I do not believe in fate. I do not believe in accidents. I cannot and will not accept the theory that long sequences of unrelated accidents determine world events. It's inconceivable that those with power and wealth would not band together with a common bond, a common interest, and a long-range plan to decide and direct the future of the world. For those with the resources to do otherwise would be totally irresponsible. I know that I would be the first to organize a conspiracy to control the outcome of the future if I were such a person and a conspiracy did not yet exist. I would do it in an attempt to ensure the survival of the principles in which I believe, the survival of my family, my survival, and the survival of the human race if for no other reason. I believe, therefore, that a grand game of chess is being played on a level that we can barely imagine, and we are the pawns. Pawns, ladies and gentlemen, are valuable only under certain circumstances and are frequently sacrificed to gain an advantage. Anyone who has studied military strategy is familiar with the concept of sacrifice, those who have seriously studied history have probably discovered the real reason we go to war on a regularly scheduled basis. Now, before you ever begin trying to understand my message, folks, I advise you to play at least two complete games of chess. You must learn the rules they play by. You must realize objectively that some pieces are more valuable than others and that the king is the most valuable of all. You cannot learn reality if you get caught up in the fantasy that it's not fair. You must come to know that the ultimate outcome of the game is the only thing that counts. You see, you were lied to when you were told that it does not matter whether you win or lose, it's how you play the game. Winning in the world of the elite is everything. Indeed, ladies and gentlemen, it is the only thing. The power elite, the priests of the mystery religion of Babylon intend to win. My research has shown at this point that the future laid out for us may be just about impossible to change. I do not agree with the means by which the powerful few have chosen for us to reach this end. I do not agree that the end is where we should end at all. But unless we can wake the sheeple Nothing short of civil war will stop the planned outcome. Now, folks, I base that statement not on defeatism, but on the apathy of the majority of the American people. Twenty-five years ago, I would have believed otherwise, but twenty-five years ago, I was also sound asleep. We have been taught lies. Reality is not at all what we perceive it to be. We cannot survive any longer by hanging on to the falsehoods of the past, no matter what they are. No matter what you think you believe, you must confront reality now at this point in history, or you are lost. Reality must be discerned at all costs if we are to be a part of the future. Truth must prevail in all instances, no matter who it hurts or helps, if we are to continue to live upon this earth. Folks, at this point, what we want may no longer matter. 
It is what we must do to ensure our survival that counts. The old way is in the certain process of destruction, and a new world order is beating down the door. To cling to the past is guaranteed suicide. To remain apathetic is assured enslavement. To learn the truth and then act upon it is the only means of survival at this moment. To shrug off the information that you hear from all sources, and especially from the hour of the time, and to disregard its warning will result in the complete destruction of the Republic of the United States of America. You will never get a second warning or a second chance. Like it or not, this is it, stark reality. You can no longer turn your head, ignore it, pretend it's not true, say, it can't happen to me, run or hide. The wolf is at the door. I, ladies and gentlemen, fear for the little ones, the innocents, my little daughter, your son and your daughters, who are already paying for our mistakes. You see, there exists a great army of occupationally orphaned children. At this moment, they are attending government-controlled daycare centers, and latchkey kids who are running wild in the streets, and the lopsided, emotionally wounded children of single welfare mothers born only for the sake of more money in the monthly check. Open your eyes and look at them, for they are the future. In them I see the sure and certain destruction of this once proud nation. In their vacant eyes I see the death of freedom. They carry with them a great emptiness, as if they have no soul. And someone will surely pay a great, great price for their suffering. Now, if we do not act in concert with each other and ensure that the future becomes what we need it to be, then we will surely deserve whatever fate awaits us. I believe, ladies and gentlemen, with all my heart and soul that God put me in places and in positions throughout my life so that I would be able to deliver this warning to His people. I pray that I have been worthy and that I have done my job. And this is my creed. I believe first in God, number one in my life the same God in which my ancestors believed. I believe in Jesus Christ and that He is my Savior. Second, I believe in the Constitution of the Republic of the United States of America without interpretation as it was written and meant to work, for it is the only document in the history of the world that ever set anyone truly free. And no one else upon the face of this earth has ever lived as free as those of us who have lived under the Constitution and the Bill of Rights of the United States of America. I have given my sacred oath to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Ladies and gentlemen, I intend to fulfill that oath. Third, I believe in the family unit, and in particular, my family unit. I have sworn that I will give my life, if it is required, in defense of God, the Constitution, or my family. And fourth, and I hope you listen to this very, very carefully. Fourth, I believe that any man without principles that he is ready and willing to die for at any given moment, is already dead and is of no use or consequence whatsoever. People, I think it's time we stop this running around. This world is going too fast and we'd like to slow it down. 
Don't let them talk you into doing what you don't want to. Just learn to say no and learn how to refuse. Cause you don't owe nobody nothing except God above. Go out and go after the things in life you love. Don't try to force it if it ain't going smooth. The one person that you just never try to fool you. You can make it to the top, but only you'll know when to reach. And I am not just talking, so I practice what I preach. Maybe you don't do all the things you're supposed to. Your boss gives you a job you hate, but you smile at the rules. You see yourself playing the game and it's rubbing you wrong. Oh, you don't know how much more you'll take. How long can it go on? Well, you don't know nobody, nothing except God above. Go out and go after the things in life you love. Don't try to force it. It ain't going smooth. The one person that you just never try to fool is you. You can make it to the top, but only you'll know when to reach. And I am not just talking, I practice for a free. No, I am not just talking, cause I practice what I preach. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe in our Constitution and in the Bill of Rights. I believe in it wholeheartedly without reservation. And I know that what I deny to others, I deny myself. I cannot take any rights away from anyone else that I also claim for myself. So I must allow everyone to speak. I must allow everyone to have their own religion, their own beliefs. It doesn't matter what that religion is. For if I deny them that right, then I also deny myself the right to my religion, and I realize full well that it could then be taken away from me. Many of you out there don't understand that. You're free. You're an American, or you're not. What you deny to the Nazi espousing his filth on the street corner, you deny yourself. And it is not in denying him his speaking ability that will save you. It is finding the truth for yourself and teaching it to your children, and even better yet, teaching your children how to find the truth for themselves that will insulate the good from the bad. Nothing else will do it. Legislating morality does not do it. It is an active, constant search for the truth that never, never ends, teaching your children how to perform the same search, and a free flow of information always. Ladies and gentlemen, occasionally I call you sheeple. Occasionally I demonstrate a great impatience with the way things are, and sometimes with the way you are. I would not do that if I did not care about you. For if I did not care, I would not bother. I love you all. You are the sum total of everything that I care about, and the Constitution and the Bill of Rights protects us against usurpation of our creator-endowed rights, those rights given to us by God that make us what we are. I hope 
that you're beginning to understand me and what I am about. For it's not complicated at all, ladies and gentlemen. I cannot and will not join any organizations simply because I do not need a leader. I also am a messenger, and to join an organization pins me with whatever that organization is, whether I am or not, I get labeled with that label. And then millions of people will not listen to what I have to say if I am wearing a label. So while many Jews may think I'm anti-Semitic, and many blacks may think I'm anti-black, and many Aryans may think I'm anti-Aryan, and on and on and on and on, I am only a messenger. I deliver the truth, whatever that truth may be. I will continue to do that until every single person upon the face of this earth has heard my message. And once that is done, it will be time for me to go, folks. For that is the sum total of the purpose of my life. The message is that mankind must mature, must grow up, and we must do it now. We are playing with toys that can destroy us all. We have fractured ourselves into groups which oppose each other with the end result of destruction of races, peoples, countries, maybe even continents. Maybe even all life upon this earth. We are flirting with destruction. We have abandoned God, and I'm not even going to begin to try to tell you the consequence of that action. This is the only nation in the history of the world formed upon the cornerstone of God, Creator Endowed Rights. We must go back to basics, go back to our Constitution and our Bill of Rights, and we must go back to God. If we do not, we, as a nation, as a people, are doomed. I want to take a moment now to thank two very special people in my life. I get my sustenance from them. I derive my courage from them. They care for me when I am wounded. They prop me up. They dry my tears. They are always there for me. You know very little or nothing about them. My wife, Annie, and my little daughter, Dorothy, whom I call Pooh. Annie and Dorothy, I love you more than I could ever say. And for those of you who doubt the power of God, I have recently been praying that the children who were lost to me would come home. Jennifer Lynn, you have come home. I love you. I have always loved you. I dedicate the closing musical selection to those who have been with me during the roughest times of my life, Annie and Pooh. Good night. God bless America, and God bless you all. Mm -hmm.